Hi, I'm Chris Armstrong, and I'm the author of The Blue New Deal, Why We Need a New Politics for the Ocean. The ocean has been pummeled by a whole series of environmental challenges, from climate change and acidification, to plastic pollution, to industrial fishing, and existing forms of oceanic governance have not proven themselves up to the task of turning the tide in environmental destruction. At the same time, we face another crisis, growing inequality in the ocean economy, with relatively few privileged actors scooping up the lion's share of the ocean's many resources. In a Blue New Deal, I ask how we got here, why it is that existing ocean politics is failing us so badly, and how we can do better. Who owns the ocean? That's a question that's almost as old as human history. The ancient Greeks and Romans were confident that no one ever could own the ocean. In the 17th century, the famous Dutch scholar Hugo Grotius argued that no one should ever be allowed to own the ocean. Anyone who placed fences in the sea would see them float away. Moreover, there was no point in ownership of the ocean because it's many resources, it's fish, it's pearls, they are essentially limitless in supply. But almost immediately, that view came to attract some fierce criticisms. The English philosopher John Selden argued that it was possible to mark out pieces of oceanic territory and that there was a point to doing so because the resources of the ocean were in fact distinctly limited. Overfishing in the North Sea proved this even in the 17th century. In a Blue New Deal, I show why these two great perspectives on oceanic governance, the idea of freedom, and the idea of enclosure or ownership of the ocean have not served us well. And I look for alternative models of oceanic governance that can do better in facing the massive challenges of environmental destruction and inequality that we face today. We often tell ourselves there's plenty more fish in the sea, but what if there aren't? What if industrial fishing is to systematically degrading the marine environment and destroying its own future in the process. One thing we might do as consumers is to reduce or eliminate fish in our diet if we can. But even short of that, we could be more ethical in our consumption. We could avoid eating fish that are especially endangered or where fishing is associated with particularly destructive environmental practices like bottom trawling, or where it's associated with horrific human rights abuses, as unfortunately some sectors of the fishing economy are. Some countries have painted a rosier way forward, protecting workers in the fishing industry and allowing fish populations to recover to something like their prior state of health. But there's a very long way to go before we could even begin to talk of contemporary fishing practices as sustainable. The idea that humans have rights is almost universally accepted. And that idea tells us that there are some things, like killing us or torturing us, that no one must ever do. But what if marine animals also have rights? What would that change? when it comes to our interaction with the ocean. Incredibly, the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, the closest thing we have to a constitution for the ocean, makes no mention of the possibility that animals might have rights at all. But if we look at animals like whales or dolphins, they're creatures with incredible capacities. Like us, they use language, they appear to have culture, they appear to value the freedom of movement, the freedom to associate with like-minded others. And it might therefore be that in interfering with those freedoms, in killing or imprisoning or experimenting on dolphins and whales, we might violate their rights. Now the task of working out what are ocean politics that respected the rights of marine animals will be a complex one. But all the more reason, I believe, to start that task now.
Climate change is already driving sea level rise for two reasons. Firstly, as water warms, it expands. Secondly, the great ice caps in places like Greenland and Antarctica are melting, pouring more water into the sea. Hundreds of millions of people live within just a few meters of current sea levels. They may lose their land and their livelihoods to the encroaching tides. But some of the most devastating consequences could be felt by the inhabitants of small island states scattered across the Atlantic or the Pacific or the Indian Ocean, some of which only lie one metre or even less above sea levels. Entire countries, Vanuatu, Tuvalu, Kiribati, could go out of existence. In a Blue New Deal, I look at what the political future might look like for these communities. Even if individual islanders are able to find refuge elsewhere, will their country cease to exist? What would statehood and self-determination look like if the entire land territory of an existing state simply disappeared? I tried to paint a picture in which these communities retain statehood and citizenship, but it's a momentous challenge that political leaders of the world need to engage with urgently. The majority of the world's ocean falls into what international lawyers call the high seas. It's not the territory of any particular state. There are very few and rather weak institutions that regulate what anyone can do there. As a result, we see highly destructive, subsidised fishing practices taking place. We also see underneath the high seas, the gradual emergence of a deep sea mining industry that could have untold environmental consequences. In a Blue New Deal, I paint a different picture for the high seas and the seabed below it. On my vision, they would be governed by a new organisation, the World Ocean Authority, tasked with their environmental protection. We should shift the emphasis from easy and free exploitation to effective protection. We should be the guardians of the high seas for the millions of creatures that live there and the vital ecosystem roles that it protects. Only by fundamentally transforming the governance of the high seas and the seabed can we secure our planet's future.